Hi everybody, it's Tim with Tim Boyer Photography. This week's tutorial is autofocus selection points and depth of field. I made a comment in the last video I did where with the Olympus cameras, I'm just using a single point autofocus. And I wanted to talk a little bit more about that because right now I'm trying to refine how I'm setting up my autofocus in the M1X Olympus system. So I'm not using a wide array of, of autofocus selection points. Just some general guidelines for bird photography is that the smaller the bird is and the more erratic it flies, the more active autofocus points we need. And then in a different scenario, if you have one autofocus point and it's right on the head of the bird, you know that the eye is going to be sharp. And we know we're trying to get the eye sharp all the time in bird photography. But there's a couple of other variables here. So using one autofocus point is really good if you can get it on the bird's head and you can get a sharp eye. But quite often the birds are farther away and we're using these big telephoto lenses. And so those are two variables that we have to account for. The longer the telephoto lens is, the less depth of field you're going to have on the bird. And the further away the bird is, the more depth of field there is. So theoretically then, if the bird is really close, you're going to want to use fewer autofocus points. If the bird is further away, you can use more autofocus points. So let's take a look at that and see how some of these things work. If you want to learn more about bird photography and create better bird images, click the subscribe button and then hit the bell icon so you don't miss any of the upcoming tutorials. This is pretty typical of most bird photography autofocus systems here. We've got the a very small uh, focus area. We've got uh, one focus area. We've got the center one with the four assists. We've got center with eight assist points. And then these are what Canon called zones or Nikon called matrix. And so they work a little bit different in that there are multiple focus points and they'll camera will automatically focus on the nearest part of the picture. So I had all of these checked in my Canon camera because I use them all for different things. And I think there's a couple of tutorials about that. Most of the time though, I use this one spot for portraits of birds. I use the one with the four assist points as kind of one of my default settings. And then for birds in flight, my default mode was one active point with eight surround points. And then I also used, this is the symbol that means all the active points are available. And I would use this with flocks of birds or where there were small birds and they were flying erratically, that kind of thing. If the small bird was far enough away, so I had enough depth of field to do that. Our aperture over here, F4 and F8, and this is with a full frame sensor camera, at 33 feet, F8 gives us twice as much depth of field as f4 and then you can also see that as we go along here the further the way the bird is the more depth of field that we have so if you're taking a picture of a bird and it's 66 feet away if you're shooting at f4 you're going to have almost a foot of depth of field and a lot of the birds going to be in focus unless it's a really large bird like a great blue heron or a bald eagle or something like that if it's a small bird like a swallow or something then you're going to have the whole bird in the depth of field zone and so you're going to be okay at f8, I've doubled my depth of field, but still if I'm taking a picture of a larger bird, I'm not gonna have enough room to have the head and the wingtips sharp. The depth of field is just not wide enough. Like a bald eagle has a six foot wingspan, so from the head to the tip of the wing is three feet. There's not enough depth of field there. Now maybe if the bird's 100 feet away, that might work. This chart explains to us what the telephoto length does. So if we have a 400 millimeter lens at 33 feet, we've got a foot of depth of field, but we have a half a foot if we're on a 600 millimeter lens. So if we get out here to 100 feet at 400 millimeters, we have nine feet of depth of field. So all of the bald eagle, or if you've got two bald eagles or three cranes or something like that, a flock of birds, you can get all of them sharp with a 400 millimeter lens at 100 feet. That doesn't happen very often. Most of the time we like to have the birds a little bit closer. But you can see that I get less than half of the depth of field with the 600 millimeters at 100 feet. Most of the time we're going to photograph birds between 30 and 60 feet. So we're going to be working with a foot to four feet or a half a foot to uh, a foot and three quarters. How much depth of field you have makes a difference on what autofocus selection points you can use. In this image of tree swallows, I've cropped the image, that's why the autofocus points go out of the frame. 
but it shows you that I was using lots of autofocus points. These three right here are active. Those are the ones that are focusing. And for one one thousandth of a second, f5.6 with a 400 millimeter lens, I had about a foot of depth of field because the distance from the camera to the birds was about 16 and a half feet. So I had lots of depth of field for these birds so that everything could be sharp. There's blurriness here in the wings, but that's because of the shutter speed. It's not because of the depth of field on the birds. And then with this peregrine falcon here, you can see that I had nine active focus points. I probably had this one, uh, one center active, and then the eight assist points all going all the way around it. And this peregrine, I had a really fast shutter speed because I wanted to make sure I froze all the action. I had three and a half feet of depth of field. I was shooting with a 600 millimeter lens and a 1.4 extender. And, but the distance from the camera to the bird was 132 feet. I've cropped this image, but because I had incredible depth of field and a really fast shutter speed, I was able to make sure that all of this bird was sharp. And then here again with this uh, Northern Harrier, you can see that my default birds in flight mode of having um, nine autofocus points active. Generally in the Canon system, I chose to have one active in the center with eight assist points. Again, with the Harrier, it's 1 800th of a second, so fairly fast shutter speed. Big lens, 600 millimeter lens with a 1.4. So effectively, that's 840 millimeters of telephoto length. But because the bird was 73 feet away, I had lots of depth of field, seven feet of depth of field, and all of the bird, except for the wingtips that are blurry because of movement, I got a sharp image because the bird was so far away. And then here again with the short-eared owl, it's one two hundredth of a second, a really high ISO at 3200. Uh, but my depth of field again is five feet because the bird is 186 feet away from me. So I can use a big telephoto lens and a 1.4 extender. The bird's really far away. I've increased my depth of field so I can get a sharp image. And I don't have to just use one autofocus point because I'm taking into consideration the sharpness that I'm gonna get from depth of field. One more example here with this Bonaparte's goal, you can see that I'm using the same system here. I've got one active main point here. I've got the eight assist points, they're all lit up and I'm at one one thousandth of a second. I only have a, about a half a foot of depth of field because I'm using a 400 millimeter lens, but the bird is closer to me. It's 31 feet away. It's a little soft on the wingtip here. It's sharp by the eye. 31 feet away, 400 millimeter lens was the right lens to use so that I could increase my depth of field. It's a depth of field of only a half a foot, but a Bonaparte's goal is a pretty small goal and most of the wingtip to the bird's eye fits in the depth of field range. One last example here, because I do use just a single point, and so here this lesser yellow legs is in amongst the grass here, and I used one focus point to get right on his eye so that I could uh, create a nice image, and so then I cropped the image a bunch, and you can see it's one one thousandth of a second f8 to increase my depth of field. The bird is 56 feet away, I'm uh, using a 600 millimeter lens and I've got about three quarters of a foot of depth of field. A lot more than I need in this kind of a shot. Really all I need is an inch or two by the bird's head there. So in summary, getting a sharp image is the most important thing and you can do that by varying the autofocus selection points you use. You can vary your aperture creating more depth of field, and you can use the distance between you and the bird to your advantage. The further you are away from the bird, the more depth of field you're gonna have. For most birds in flight, just increasing your shutter speed is always gonna help get things sharp. Use more active focus points the further the bird is away from you. Practice focusing on the bird with fewer and fewer autofocus points, and that just builds your skill level up a little bit. You want to get to the point where it's really easy to acquire the bird with as few autofocus points as possible, and then you're going to get much sharper images. And really, if you get a sharp image, you can do lots of things with it in post-processing. If you don't get a sharp image, well, there's not too much you can do with it. If you want to learn more about bird photography, check out my book, Learn the Art of Bird Photography. It's available on Amazon as a Kindle and a trade paperback. You can also go to my website, timboyerphotography.com, and check out the workshops that I do throughout the Western United States. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you next week. Bye.